Hello you all, welcome to the special presentation of Rajya Sabha Television Question Hour from the Parliament House Complex where we get you important unstart questions asked by the members of the Rajya Sabha and the answers given by the government. I'm Kriti Mishra and joining me is my colleague Vishal Thaya. Well, thank you Kriti and uh, as Kriti said in the next uh, half an hour we bring you some important questions from several ministries. So Kriti, let's uh, begin today's question and uh, the beginning is from uh, External Affairs Ministry. Right, so this question that we've picked up is from member Anand Sharma and he asks External Affairs Minister whether there's a high level of rejection of H-1B visa applications affecting Indian IT and outsourcing companies in the recent years by US administration. Well, the government goes on to answer in detail and it says that US official statistics on the rejection of H-1B visa applications of Indian nationals are not available in the public domain. The US government has adopted certain administrative measures with respect to the H-1B visa program that have introduced greater scrutiny of H-1B visa applications and increased documentation requirement. Now, there is no authoritative data on the number of notices of intent to deny and notices of intent to revoke issued by the US government in relation to the H-1B visa program. On 13th of July 2018, the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services issued a policy memorandum which grants full discretion to USCIS adjudicators to deny an H-1B application or petition without prior filing of a request for evidence or a notice of intent to deny in cases where the initial information provided in the application or petition does not demonstrate eligibility. Well, the next question is also to the Ministry of External Affairs and this is from two members, uh, Muhammad Ali Khan and Hussain Dalwai. They goes on to ask the government about the roadmap with the targets to complete the work on India, Myanmar, Thailand, Trilateral Highway area-wise and year-wise as well. That the 1360 kilometers long India Myanmar Thailand Trilateral Highway is an initiative pertaining to India, Myanmar, and Thailand. India is undertaking two sections of the Trilateral Highway, namely construction of Kaleva Yagiri Road section in Myanmar and construction of 69 bridges on the TKK Road section in Myanmar. The work on both these sections has been awarded on engineering, procurement, and construction mode and is underway since May 2018 for Kaleva Yagai section and November 2017 for the TKK section. The contractors are mobilized on project site. The scheduled time for completion of both the projects is three years from the date of commencement at the project site by the executing agency. Moving on to the next question and this one has been asked by member Joske Mani and he asks Minister of Atomic Energy whether India has declared that nuclear energy is vital for meeting the challenge of climate change and suggested efforts to promote its public acceptance amid growing opposition to nuclear power and plans by some countries to phase out their atomic power plants in the United Nations. Well, in the answer, the government says that in the 73rd meeting of the United Nations General Assembly held on 9th of November 2018 on report of the International Atomic Energy Agency, that is IAEA, India, had stated that nuclear power remains an important option to meet the challenges of increased energy demand, address concerns about climate change, redress volatile fossil fuel prices and ensure security of the energy supply. It was also mentioned that IAEA needs to continue its programs of support to member states embarking on or expanding their nuclear energy programs and most importantly support member states in enhancing their capacity to build public acceptance for nuclear energy. The ministry also goes on to say that the present installed nuclear power capacity in the country is 6,780 megawatts. Next question is for the donor ministry, that is development of northeastern region, and this comes in from uh, Sri A. Vijay Kumar. He goes on to ask the government whether it is aware that many northeastern states are not connected with the mainland. Well, the government goes on to say that in the last three years, 2,273 kilometers of national highways have been sanctioned for the northeastern region. Under the SARDPENE, including Arunachal package for roads and highways, 6,418 kilometers of road stretches and state roads have been taken up to improve the connectivity in the northeast region. Under Bharat Mara Pariyoshna, road stretches aggregation about 5,301 kilometers in northeastern region have been approved for improvement. Out of this, 
3246 kilometers road length has been approved for development of economic corridors in the northeast the next question is from member bk hari prasad and this one pertains to the ministry of human resource development and he asked whether it is a fact that there is an absolute communication gap with regard to placement of graduate candidates for employment well in the answer the ministry of human resource says that it is working uh, systematically with ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship department of science and technology and ministry of labor and employment in order to improve the employment potential for placement of uh, graduate candidates now for this uh, purpose uh, scheme is proposed to be launched by providing apprenticeship opportunities to the degree students the details of the scheme are being worked out as of now the ministry also says that uh, ugc has issued a quality mandate in which all the universities have been asked to coordinate with the industry and service sectors so as to improve the employability of the students uh, by 2022 well, the next question is from member A.K. Selvaraj, who goes on to ask the Women and Child Development Ministry whether it is a fact that Rajesh Bindal Committee has recommended action against the Hague Treaty. Well, the government goes on to say that a multi-member committee has been constituted under the chairmanship of the head of Chandigarh Judicial Academy, Chandigarh, to examine and comment on different aspects involved in the issue. The committee has proposed that there should be an inter-country Parental Child Removal Dispute Resolution Authority at the national level, which will work as an administrative body to adjudicate on matters concerning inter country parental child removal. The authority should be headed by a sitting or retired Supreme Court or High Court judge, Chief Justice, with expert members and ex officio members from the ministries concerned for better coordination. The authority should promote mediation as a first resort to resolve disputes among couples at odds. Any action of removal of child from one country to another by either of the parent should be taken to be a criminal offence. Each case should be examined on its own merits. To monitor working under the proposed legislation, the state legal services authorities and district legal services authorities may be involved. As of now, India has not signed the Hague Convention on Child Abduction. So the next question is from member Dr. Vikas Mahatme and this one is to the Ministry of Tourism and he asks whether there have been any submissions regarding specific regions made by the states for the rural circuit under the Swadesh Darshan scheme and if so, the details thereof. Well, the ministry replies in detail and says that uh, rural circuit has been identified as one of the 15 thematic circuits for development under Swadesh Darshan scheme. Now, the projects under the scheme are identified for development in consultation with the state governments, union territory administrators and are sanctioned subject to availability of funds, submission of suitable detailed project reports, adherence to scheme guidelines and utilization of funds released earlier as well. The projects sanctioned under the scheme are under various stages of implementation and once completed, the same would lead to enhanced tourist experience and increased tourist footfalls, which in turn would help to increase revenue from the tourism sector. And in fact, just a short while back, my colleague Kriti Mishra spoke to the member Vikas Mahatme about the response he's got from the government on his question. Let's listen in. Well, Vishal, Member Parliament Dr. Vikas Mahatme is joining us on Question Hour now. Welcome to Ratsabha Television, sir. You have a lot of questions about the tourism. The tourism is very important for any economy or any country. And if we talk about the tourism, the government has also given you a lot of focus. And the government has also given you a lot of questions. What do you say about the tourism industry? The tourism industry is very important for the tourism industry. कि पैसा भी आएगा कल्चर भी लोगों को पता चलेगा क्योंकि बहुत बार न्यूज़ से लोगों को लगता है कि इंडिया में बहुत सारी परेशानियां हैं लेकिन वैसा नहीं हमारा कल्चर एक बहुत स्ट्रांग है अच्छा है हम सबको साथ में लेके जाते हैं और जैसे इसमें हर चीज़ में जैसे टूरिज़्म के लिए गाइड से ले रहने की व्यवस्था के लिए ट्रांसपोर्ट ट्रांसपोर्ट रोड ट्रांसपोर्ट है रेल है एयर ट्रांसपोर्ट ये सब में जॉब्स लगेंगे और रूरल एरिया में इसमें ग्रामीण में जो विकसित नहीं हुए थे वो विकसित करेंगे टूरिज्म स्पॉट्स छोटे तो उनको भी हम अच्छी तरह से जॉब दे पाएंगे सर लगातार सरकार टूरिज्म सर्किट बनाने की भी बात कर रही है 
जो कल्चर पे भी फोकस होगा जो रिलीजन पर भी फोकस होगा जो डिफरेंट फेथ हैं उस पर भी फोकस होगा उससे कितना आप फ़ायदा देखते हैं हर फेथ के लिए एक सर्किट की आवश्यकता इसलिए कि वैसे भी लोग जाना चाहते हैं लेकिन उनको हर बार एक जगह जाना वापस आना फिर से दूसरी जगह के लिए जाना वापस आना इससे अच्छा ये सर्किट पूरा हो जाए तो ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा टूरिज़्म भी होगा उनकी जो मनीषा है वो भी पूर्ण होगी उनको भी अच्छा लगेगा और टूरिज़्म से अभी हमने जैसे कहा कि लोगों को जॉब मिलता है ये बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है और जब हम बोलते हैं कि एक भारत एक भारत यानी ऐसा नहीं हो सकता है कि हम ये कोई कहीं भारत में गया ही नहीं और अपने गांव में है और वो कभी घूमा नहीं फिर भी हम उसको उसकी प्रेरणा हो एक भारत की जब वो घूमता है हर जगह जाता है तो अपने आप सबसे मन से दिल से जुड़ता है ये एक बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है और मुझे लगता है ये दिल से जुड़ना बहुत ज़रूरी है और इसके लिए ये सर्किट्स होना बहुत ज़रूरी है जो सरकार ने काम शुरू किया है वो बहुत अच्छा है और जिससे हम कह सकेंगे कि एक भारत सुदृढ़ भारत So well, uh, Kriti, that was uh, the member Vikas Mahatme uh, replying uh, to as what exactly the government's answer is uh, to his question on the floor of the house. Well, that's all Vishal and I had for you in this session of question hour. Prashnikal with our colleagues Akhilesh Suman and Arvind Singh on the other side. Stay tuned to Rajya Sabha Television.